Oh hey guys, welcome. Welcome to what is actually our first tutorial on this channel. Uh, this was actually a question I got during one of my streams where one of the viewers asked how I would go about creating sort of this low poly style inside of Finta Designer. And with low poly, I mean what you see here, because this is what I end up making from that suggestion. Um, and it's uh, creating this faceted look as if it was a low poly 3D model. So we're gonna go through that, how to do that in Affinity Designer, and I'm gonna share some tips and tricks on how I would do it. And it's a very simple process, especially if you have an image to work from. So without further ado, let's just go over here. I prepped another document, which is a 2048 by 2048, because that's just how I like to work. And I have this image here, and this is of the amazing Kiba, or Captain Jolly Swag. <laughs> which is his official name. And we were going to start off by just using the pen tool by pressing P or over here. And we're just going to go start off. I want to create a bust of him and the ideal image you would want to go to if you're using a reference image would be something that has a strong silhouette. And I, I feel like this is strong silhouette of Kiba or dog wolf and i'm going to go through here and start from the neck here is probably a good place to start and then just create an outline just start on that and one thing to keep in mind is that i want points and sort of jagged lines uh very rough no smooth no drag no curves we just want lines with points. I want to first just create the outline. I don't want to focus on making it good yet. You see, I sort of missed the point over there. But that doesn't really matter. I want to finish off first, just creating the outline, and then we'll go around fixing. So now we have an outline, a silhouette, uh, and I'm going to put the color now to just black. Turn off the image a bit and see, uh, am I happy with this? Maybe I want to do something more with air over here. And if I also turn down the opacity on the correct layer, on the outline here, I can go around and see, okay, maybe the nose here. I want to do something a bit more with that. Maybe give that an extra point. And I give extra points by just clicking on the line. Then I could get New line where I click. Um, I want, I, I like this. No, I want to keep this like this, but I want another line here to get that strong neck. I want another point up here so that the air has a bit better shape. And I am happy with how this looks. I turn this back on check you can see this is something i like this is something i want to work with and then you can keep changing this after we've started making sort of the polygon sort of low poly look uh, and that is why this is such an easy way to work because if i find out later that you know what this shape isn't actually how i like i can just go back and change it i'll move this up here okay now I want to pull opacity up here, but I want to go up to the fill color and put this to transparent. I also want to change the outline to align to the outside, or just uh, stroke to the outside. And I'll just make this a little uh, thicker and that is just going to make it easier for us to work. Now I'm going to go back to the pen tool and I'm going to start working on the shapes within these little squares and triangles that you see here. I'm going to start off by clicking here, up here, and then ending in this point here. And then I'm just going to finish off this shape here. And you see, I finished it by it finishing up like that, creating the outline, but I'm actually going to change this to transparent and no width. And then I'm going to click this little synchronized default from selection. 
And that's just gonna help us further on. Because then we don't need to turn off the strokes and stuff. Because I don't want the stroke right now. I have this shape. I press I. That's in India. To get the eyedropper tool. I click underneath on the image here. On where I've created. Somewhere within where I created this shape. And it will get that color. Now I'm also. Going to move this layer here. Just so it, you can see how it sort of gets that little bar isn't full. It's sort of half into the image. And you can also see in the image that it ends up clipping. Being hidden, only showing inside the shape. And this is what we call a clipping mask. Or a clipping layer. Or thousands of different names. But what it basically does is that this shape is now only shown within our outline shape and that's really handy because first of all we know that we stay within our original silhouette which we were happy with and if i would decide to go in on the outline and start changing i still have that underneath if i keep changing it over and it's it's very simple as if i want to go move this in I don't have to go around and change on these shapes anyways we're gonna continue going in here and then I'm gonna create triangle there and then maybe I'll move something up to here and now I'm just gonna go around and creating these shapes there's a couple of rules I try to stick to. If you've ever done anything with um, 3D retopologizing, as it's called, like retopping 3D models, this is very much the same process. I just go around finding these points and then I want to create either triangles or squares. And that's what really sells this low poly look and style. I also try to make sure that each of these lines always ends either on the outside edge, these triangles or squares. Either I want to end it on this line or within another point. If I want to go up here, I want to keep a square with four points. But what sometimes I've seen is might be tempting is that I want to end it here. And then I'll start creating another one with more shapes up here. And this will very easily make it look uh, messy. So what I try to do, I'm just going to delete that. Always make sure that they end on another point. So I work just from point to point. And it isn't always it decides to catch the shape underneath, but I can always go in again and move you and you should find there. And the last thing I would, uh, I try also to think about is how, what we call the edge flow, how the edges move along and how the, these different triangles and squares, these different polys move along. Now you can see how the eye has these, or what is it, two, four, six, seven, different around it, going like a circle. I have a stop here that sort of follows the form and shapes of my reference. And I would just go about uh, after this, just go about finishing up this, creating these different polygons, finishing up, and when I'm done and I feel happy with all around, uh, just to save some time now, I'm just going to show how I would end here. To simply make this the outline as well transparent. And then it would end up with something like this. Now, 
since everything is contained within this shape you can see my fill layer here is actually white because sometimes when you do like this uh, the way i showed you you will end up with some small spacing in between and then you can decide what kind of color you want for the lines in between so you can have very dark you can have more color whatever you whatever you feel will look cool on your model so that is a really quick introduction into how i would uh, make low poly art style in affinity designer i really hope you liked it if you did feel free to drop a like and if you have any more questions on tutorials or how i would do stuff in affinity designer do let me know so thank you guys so much for watching.